my name is Bruce Shaney and today I'd like to show you a couple examples of resonant pendulums. Uh, they're very simple devices that demonstrate the energy transferring from one part of the system into another. So let's take a closer look. First let's start with something we're all familiar with. These girls on a swing can demonstrate the idea of resonance. A swing is actually an example of a big pendulum. Now when they swing their legs at the right time, that energy can accumulate and that's going to cause them to go higher. Now let's switch that idea over to our first double pendulum. We have a string that's attached to two points. I've covered it with tape so we can see it easier. I have two pendulums hanging down, heavy weights at the bottom, and I'm simply going to pull this first one back and let it swing. Now watch what happens to the one that I pulled back. It stops. The energy is in the other one. And now the energy transfers from the second one back into the first one again. This is resonance transferring energy from one part of the system into another. Now we can make these double pendulums out of all sorts of materials. But once again, it's going to start with a string that's attached to two places. In this case, I have two shoes hanging down from it. And if I pull one back and release it, we'll see the energy transfer from this shoe over to this one and then back again. Here's a smaller version that sits on my desk. Uh, once again, we see the same idea. The energy transfers from one pendulum over to the other by that common thread at the top. In this case, we're going to take a look at a vertically suspended double pendulum. I have a one kilogram mass here that's suspended by a piece of string, a 100 gram mass that's suspended with an equal length of string down here. I put black tape on each piece of string just to make it easier to see. And we're going to pull this one back and release it and observe what happens. This next piece is called a Wilberforce pendulum. It varies between a vertical up and down movement and a torsional or twisting motion. Our Wilberforce pendulum has a wooden frame to support this slinky spring. It has a dowel attached to the bottom part of it. And by itself, this piece will simply just bounce up and down. And there's these wooden wheels that simply slide in and out to adjust the movement so that the torsional twisting matches the vertical up and down movement. When the periods of the two movements match, we'll see a complete change of energy from the vertical bouncing movement to the torsional twisting motion. And then back again. Now the reason for this behavior is that as a coiled spring is stretched, it unwinds and turns in one direction. And then when that force is released, it rewinds itself and then turns in the opposite direction. Now we can build one of these Wilberforce pendulums with some simple materials. There's two balls of clay, there is a slinky spring, a wooden dowel, dunk tongue depressor, duct tape, and a meter stick to attach it to. This started with a cheap slinky that I cut in half. Now I'm attaching the tongue depressor and the wooden dowel to the ends of it, simply using the duct tape. The next step is to add additional mass to that wooden dowel. I like using clay balls because I can adjust them very easily. I can move them closer to the spring, further away, I can make them heavier or lighter and adjust their moment of inertia. So here's what it looks like. The weights are on here. We'll have to fine tune a little bit. But the last step then is to attach it to a meter stick. And I'm going to use duct tape for that. And let's give it a try. Now, in a previous video, I showed an example of a chaotic bar pendulum. Even this device shows the idea of resonance. If I give it a slight push, 
we'll see the energy transfer back and forth from the arms into the bar as it rocks back and forth. Now, where it became chaotic was when I pushed it harder so that the transfer was more random. Let's try that. 